feeders take off. Let's start on the takeoff screen. Make sure you have selected the correct job that you want to work on. Make sure that you also have selected the correct vendor that you wish to use and the correct labor that you wish to use. For the phase, start by clicking the phase dropdown and then select the phase you wish to work in. When we select the phase, IntelliBit automatically brings us to the correct library. At the bottom of the screen, we can perform feeder takeoff by copper pipe, amp or wire, or by aluminum pipe and amp. We will choose feeder assembly by copper pipe. Single click to select. How will this feeder be installed? On the bar joist, steel beam, or on the wood? If we scroll to the bottom right, there are several applications for us to choose from. In this case, we will say on the bar joist and use an EMT. Single click to select. I'll also make sure to choose the correct size. In this case, three quarter and then single click. In the assembly group screen, we'll determine which coupling we want. I will select EMT steel set screw. For the EMT connector, I will select EMT steel set screw. For the bushing, I will select the three quarter plastic bushing. For wire, I will select a number 12 wire. For my ground wire, I'll also select a number 12 wire. Maybe I'm going to sub out coring and fire stopping. So it's okay if we do not select anything. Same thing goes for my conduit bodies. In this case, we'll skip both. I then click take off. Now, before I enter the quantity, I want to better identify what this feeder is by adding a comment. After I enter that, I click on my number pad to enter my quantities. For conduit length, we'll enter 100 feet, then click Enter Prompt. For number of runs, is that a single run or a parallel run? We'll just say it's a single run. Type in 1 and then click Enter Prompt. Number of elbows, number of field bends. If I select something for number of elbows, it's assumed I will be purchasing those elbows. But in this case, we're going to bend in the field. So the number of elbows will be 0. And then for field bends, we'll say it's going to be 3. That will give me the labor to bend. For hanger spacing, let's put 10 feet. Enter prompt. For segments per run, a segment is really trying to calculate how many connectors to give you. In order to know how many connectors to give you, you need to know how many boxes. So in this case, we'll say there's two boxes. Enter prompt. Additional feed each wire is your makeup, and you should put that in the total. For example, if I want three feet on each end, I would type in six. But in this case, I want five feet on each end, so I'll type in 10. Then click Enter Prompt. For number of wires in the pull, let's say we're pulling four wires. Click Enter Prompt. Close the library windows at the bottom of the screen until the red X's go away. At the top of the takeoff screen, look at line one. This line, designated by red text, is our assembly's comment. It will never have a material unit or a labor unit. It's just an identifier. Line two designates the assembly name and is marked by the red rectangle icon to the left. The name of the assembly is the one I chose when I was working at the bottom of the screen. That line will never have a material unit or a labor unit as well. After that, starting on line three, we see my 100 feet of EMT, 32 center foot times a 100 equals $32.69. 0 0.02 labor times 100 is 2.8 labor hours. We set zero elbows. We chose three field bends, so it gives us labor to do the bends. It then gives us the coupling every 10 feet. We have four connectors because we put in two segments, and we have the bushings, the wire, and the ground. Notice the feeder assembly does not include a box. If you need a box, then you go down to the bottom of the screen and click Pull and Junction Box Assembly. We have a number of choices across the top of the window. We'll go with a 6 inch deep pull box on the bar joist. Single click to select. Again, we'll say it's enamel no knockout and we want a 6x12x12. By 12 by 12. Single click to select. The assembly groups window appears again. In this case, I'm going to leave the comment blank because this box is part of that feeder that I just took off. Finally, 
my number of boxes would be two. Enter prompt. I then close the library windows with the red X close buttons until they all go away. Thanks for watching this Connest tip video. Like this video and subscribe to our channel to get more tips and to keep up to date with Connest software systems.